Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this first Sunday of Advent and the first Sunday of our first day of December. And may we also keep Christ always first in our lives. You please be please rise if you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Oh, I wanted to 
and, um, introduce you to Sarah Holstrom. She will be giving the sermon and reading the gospel for us this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, alive in the world, reviving creation, arriving soon. Amen. Um, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned. We trust earthly powers and human authority alone. We grow fearful. We cling to false comforts. God of might, we confess that we have sinned. We have turned away from our neighbors. We have trusted false promises. God in our midst, we confess that we have sinned. We plead, come to us. Bring your mercy to birth in us. A righteous branch springs forth. It is Christ the Lord, our Savior, in whom we have forgiveness, life, and mercy. By the power of the Holy Spirit, receive the grace and forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ, whose days draws near. Amen. From deep in the past, Jeremiah calls to us, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Beloved, the days are surely coming when the yearning of the land, the longing of the sun, moon, and stars, the desperate need of the people of earth for flourishing and peace will receive their fulfillment. Well, fear, anxiety, misinformation, and suspicion surrounds us on every side. We choose to watch and wait in hope, preparing our hearts to notice and cooperate with God's grace already at work in our midst. We light this candle of hope as a sign of our commitment to pay attention and prepare for the days that are surely coming. And we all are already here, the days within God's kingdom of love, justice, and mercy will reign. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come by your merciful protection. Alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first song is Blessed Be the God of Israel, number 250.
first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Be God. The second reading this morning is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be as blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter, beginning at verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness of the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You, you may be seated. I don't see any children here yet at this service, so we'll save the children's sermon for the next one. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a pleasure to be here in Marion and to be with all of you. But before I get started, some of you might know this. A few of you might even know me. Um, I'm a PK, 
or a preacher's kid, and I inherited some of those preaching genes. My father was Pastor John Sachs, who served in Caroline and Split Rock about, oh, let's say in the early 1980s. So some of you might know me. But since I did inherit some of those preaching genes, my good friend Shemaine asked Sherry how long she would like me to talk this morning. And don't worry, I'm not going to keep you here too long. But just to make sure that I don't get too long-winded, I'm going to stick to my notes. As a person who had the opportunity to hang around with a lot of pastors growing up, I learned many things, not the least of which included expectations. There were certain ways to dress, there were certain words to say, certain ways to behave, etc. I even knew what pew to sit in. When we arrived at one church, my mother was actually told, you're sitting in my spot by a woman nearby. But it can be very comforting to find routine and familiarity in things. And I knew the pomp and circumstance of the pulpit, too. I could pick out a preaching voice from a mile away. But I also yearned for a God that felt real to me, not just encased in specific words and motions that I went through each Sunday. And I remember when I had my aha moment, and of all places, it happened in the water. At the age of 12, I found myself going to church camp. I sang songs to guitar music and had Bible studies under huge pine trees and cooked my mac and cheese in an open fire on the shores of Lake Michigan. And I even learned to enjoy what we later called grit when we accidentally knocked the cheese over into the sand before it was added to the noodles. My classmates and I canoed and hiked and played volleyball and slept in cabins without air conditioning. And then we had worship in the water at the lake. Are you kidding? I thought, I mean, I know worship. I know how I'm supposed to act and what I'm supposed to say and when. But in the water? When I learned that my God could be worshiped anywhere, even in the water, with joyful, silly songs and heartfelt gratitude, I was hooked. So much so that my first job as an adult was being a camp counselor at a church camp. Now those early expectations helped me to find a way to Christ that was genuine and real, and it helped me to learn how to have my daily walk in faith. And over time, it led me to join the organization that I'm proud to be a part of today, Lutheran Social Services of Wisconsin and Upper Michigan, or LSS, a place where people help others live out their God-given gifts to serve. Now, expectations are kind of an interesting thing. When our expectations are met, we feel pretty good. But when events happen in people's lives that they don't expect, it can often leave them feeling entirely out of control. And I bet that all of you can recall times in your lives when maybe you felt like your life was not unfolding in the ways that you expected, or frankly, you might have felt like it couldn't have gotten any worse. The people that we serve at LSS understand as they struggle with addictions, as they yearn for a child to adopt or battle mental illness, as they deeply want to live independently in their own home, as they begin again after incarceration or try to start a new life in a new country after fleeing impossible situations. All of these challenges and more happen every day and they're certainly not what people expected. Now, at first glance, today's gospel might seem a little odd for the first Sunday in Advent. I mean, aren't we supposed to be thinking about Mary and Joseph and the upcoming birth and the preparation for that instead of the end of the world? 
There's certainly a lot to unpack in the text about expectations. But as we read through the text carefully, we see that it really talks about preparing, about getting ready and not being caught off guard, which is a lot like Advent. We are warned not to let our hearts be so weighed down by the worries of this world to miss the focus of what God is calling us to do. And it's easy when we see such distress in the world to focus on the doom. But if we focus instead on loving our neighbors, on answering the call to what Jesus would do, and by keeping our hearts focused strongly on his word, we will be prepared for this next coming. And as we see the signs and stand up and raise our heads to the heavens, our redemption will be near. Just five years ago, I became a grandmother, and so I'm getting to that age, and maybe some of you here can relate, to where I'm doing a lot of talking about the hereafter. And by that, I mean uh, I walk into a room and I ask myself, what did I come in here after? <laughs> Have any of you who wear glasses ever gone looking for yours only to find out they were sitting right on top of your head? That happens sometimes. We miss things. And I even had a friend who once told me, as soon as I find my phone, I can leave, but I can't find it anywhere. And this was a conversation that we were having on the phone. <laughs> now, I share these examples because we as humans have a way of not always recognizing the important things that are right in front of us. And we might miss the opportunities that we have every day to show Christ's love. Consider just a few examples that we might not have noticed. In 2022, drug overdoses killed nearly 108,000 people in our country. That's enough to fill Lambeau Field and still have more than 26,000 people left over. More than one out of every 69 persons on earth were displaced by the end of 2023 due to war and persecution. This number, which is more than 117 million people, has increased every year for the past 12 years. One in five children in our midst have a mental illness, but the average delay in getting help is 8 to 10 years. But did you also know that through our joint ministry, gifts from congregations like yours have made it possible for LSS to provide addiction treatment services for over 45 years, and our programs continue to expand? Did you know that because of your support, we have helped over 10,000 refugees through our refugee resettlement program, connecting them to housing, food, jobs, education, so that they are self-sufficient within an average of three months, with record numbers served this past year. And that thanks to many of partnerships, LSS has implemented innovative mental health programs and models of service delivery in schools and in families' homes to help them overcome challenges and restore hope. Now, as I said, one of the things you'll hear us say at LSS is that we help people use their God-given gifts to serve. And God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes our expectations can cloud our understanding. I recall being a young mother of two toddlers, working part-time and burdened with expenses that exceeded our family's income. And I prayed, how could I possibly support the important ministries that I heard about in church when I couldn't make ends meet myself. God understood and helped me to understand that we are all given gifts, but not the same kind, or even in every season of our lives. He gives us the gifts of time, talent, treasure, and ties. 
Now, I was lacking in treasure, but I had time and talent and ties, so I decided to use those God-given gifts. I formed a committee which started a preschool at our church and now has been running for 30 years. I helped to organize a picnic with chicken dinners as a fundraiser for a family who wanted to adopt two children from Mexico but had mounting legal bills in the process. And I shared messages with others to let them know about opportunities. And this was way before the time of social media. Now maybe you have the gift of time and can volunteer. Or maybe you have talent for organizing the collection of items for people in need. Or maybe you're connected to other people or groups who might know someone who knows someone who is blessed with an abundance of financial gifts. Maybe you find faith to be a central part of your life and can pray for those in need and for God to combine all these gifts in ways that help us to prepare and be ready for his return. Through the Holy Spirit, we are all in this ministry together and God is calling us to be a part of something big. One Lutheran recognized an opportunity to serve and created the Loving Lutherans Challenge to encourage more Lutherans to support the ministries of LSS. Every Lutheran congregation that contributes 10% or more over their 2023 gift total and every Lutheran congregation who did not give in 2023, but does so this year, will have the entire amount of their donation matched, up to $1 million. This is also true for individuals that belong to a Lutheran congregation. So if you contribute directly to LSS and just tell us that you're members of St. John's Lutheran here in Marion, your personal donation counts towards your congregation's total to be matched. And this is true for all Lutherans, not just ELCA. So if you know of other Lutherans who would like to double the blessings for those in need, please help share the word. Several years ago, when my children were little, I remember getting them ready for the Sunday school Christmas program. And my son, who was not quite five at the time, waited downstairs in his suit with his Looney Tunes tie and his wingtip shoes while I helped his older sister get ready upstairs. She wore a red satin dress with white tights, and I helped to curl her hair with a curling iron so that she was all ready for this special event. And I will never forget little Andy's words as he saw his sister coming down the stairs. His breath was taken away, and I know he meant this as a compliment when he said, oh, Lauren, you look like somebody else. Now Matthew reminds us that when we give food to the hungry or drink to the thirsty, when we provide homes to the strangers or look after the sick, that Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And there's a song that I remember singing at church camp, and it summed this up pretty nicely. The words included, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. But like little Andy, we might think, you look like somebody else, when in fact, it is Jesus himself in front of us in the form of a refugee, an addict, a person with a mental illness, a criminal, a child with a disability, or a drunk. Through the magic of the Holy Spirit, we are many parts to one body of Christ. And when you remember LSS by using what God first gave you, your time, treasure, talents, and ties, then together we act compassionately, we serve humbly, and we lead courageously. You 
make it real by living your faith and helping us to serve more people all across Wisconsin and Upper Michigan. As loving Lutherans, they will know that the members of St. John's Lutheran Church here in Marion are Christians by your love, by your love. They will know you are Christians by your love. Amen. Please join in the hymn of the day, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please stand as you are able and join me in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers are on the prayer sheet in your bulletin. With hope and expectations, we offer our prayers for the church and all who wait God's day of restoration. Dear Father, waiting is so hard. We live in a world of microsecond access to websites, messages, purchases, and answers to our questions. We have lost the joy of anticipation, the wonder of the unknown, the thrill of surprise. May we dedicate this Advent season to taking time to appreciate the gift you gave the world in the birth of your son, Jesus. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dear Father, as winter takes residence in our lives, we ask for your protective arm in our day-to-day -day travels. Merciful God. 
Healing Father, for those who are ill, the days are long. Help us to brighten the life of a shut-in with a card or visit. Today, we especially pray for Braden, Caleb, Cindy, Darla, Denise, Diane, Doug, Jerry S., yes, Carly, Christy, Larry, Lee, Lori, Nancy, Nathan, Nick, Oliver, Pat, Rachel, Tracy, Will, and all those we hold in our hearts and with the sympathy for Sa the family and friends of Sandy Nielsen. Merciful God, Dear Father, someone needs us to listen. Someone needs us to help. Someone needs us to forgive. Someone needs us to stick up for them. Help us not miss the opportunity to make a difference. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dear Father, help us to find ways to bring Christmas to a child. The world puts the birth of Jesus on the sidelines. The bright lights focus on decorations, presents, and satisfying our wants list. Prompt us to tell the true story of the dimly lit barn with a baby sleeping in a donkey trough. Your son, merciful God, receive our prayer. As we begin the Advent season, we pledge to live each day making someone else's day better, remembering that it is giving that in giving we are blessed beyond measure. Merciful God, join me in the last petition. With everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated as we give back to God from what he first gave us. Please stand as you are able. Oh. 
Creator God, you made the whole world, even the farthest stars, and you draw near. Strengthen us that we may live in expectation for the advent of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to thank Sarah for her message this morning. She will be around during coffee hour, which we have today. If you want to visit with her, if you want any more information on LSS, I'm sure she'd be glad to give it to you. And she also has envelopes if anybody is interested in donating towards them. Um, our next Sunday there will be communion at 8 and 10.30, and then also on Wednesday, December 18th. The office will be closing early on Tuesday, December 3rd at 2.45. There are a number of sole opportunities for this Advent season. Three of them involve clipboards in the back. One is if you want to bring a Christmas flower. There's a sign-up sheet back there. There's another one if you're interested in helping decorate the church. They will be decorating the church for Christmas on December 11th after the 6 o'clock service. And if you aren't able to help with decorating the church, you can bring a treat for the people who are decorating. There's a sign-up for that. And then the last one is volunteering for the Salvation um, Bell Ringers, which will be Tuesday, December 10th at Marketplace in Clintonville. So if you are able to volunteer for that, there's an, that also is back there. Take your pick of the clipboards if you want to sign up on one, or you can sign up on all three of them. Nobody will tell you not to. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Any birthdays? Then our last song is People Look East, number 248.
God of endings and beginnings, God in the darkness and the light, God in our hope for the journey, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way for Emmanuel. Thanks be to God. Have a good Advent. <laughs>